Hi friends, Miss Megan from the Children's Museum of the Low Country in downtown Charleston, South Carolina. And I am joining you again from the art room here at the museum. Unfortunately, I can't be in the classroom with you and that makes me sad, but that is okay. We are still gonna have a great day today. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna explore magnetic and non-magnetic materials when we talk about properties of matter. So what we're gonna to do today, um, we're gonna need some things that we used yesterday and the rest of the week, but um, just to give you a little heads up, everybody's gonna need their bag with all their miscellaneous stuff inside of it. Uh, teachers, these are the two handouts we're gonna be using today. We're gonna to use the sorting mat that is magnetic and non-magnetic. And we'll get to talk a little bit about that. Then we're also going to use this um, white cardstock um, picture. It says the Children's Museum at the top, and it's got this nice blue border. All right. So those will be the things you need today. All right. Again, today we're going to start with items that are magnetic and not magnetic. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know anything that's magnetic? What's kind of cool is it sticks almost. Maybe some of you have magnets on your refrigerator at home, or maybe you have experimented with magnets at school. So today we're going to start by sorting items that are magnetic and not magnetic. If you think you know what it is, that's great. But if you don't, that is okay. Don't worry. We're going to get to keep on learning while we're doing that activity, and that's why this is fun. Okay, so then you're going to start with your bag of miscellaneous stuff. Okay, now you're going to carefully dump your bag out. And one of the things you're going to see is this smaller Ziploc bag. Okay, you're going to have the big Ziploc bag and inside is this smaller Ziploc bag. I need you to take that Ziploc bag out and set it aside because we're going to actually need it today. Okay, then what you're going to do for me is you're going to get out this sorting sheet. Okay, magnetic versus non-magnetic. And the first one, this says magnetic, okay? And you can see I have a horseshoe magnet and it looks like these items are stuck or attracted to the magnet. So what you're gonna put in here is things that you think, you're gonna make a prediction and guess if the material is going to attract or stick to the magnet, then you're gonna put it in the circle. You see in this one, it says non-magnetic. And it does not look like that is attracted or sticking to the magnet. So that would mean it's non-magnetic. So just like we did the other day, we're gonna place our sorting mat down in front of us, okay? I'm just gonna move my camera quick so you can see. And on this side, I have magnetic, and this side is non-magnetic. So I'm gonna do, I'm going to pull some items out of my bag and I'm going to start with, ooh, this, this plastic cut. I don't know. I do not think it will attract or stick to my magnet. So I'm going to put it in non-magnetic. I'm going to pull the next item out. Hmm, let's see. Oh, this is a piece of wood kind of like in my picture. I don't think that's magnetic either. So I'm gonna go in non-magnetic over here. <gasps> Ooh, what about this? I have this fuzzy pom-pom with sparkly, looks like metallic little stuff. Mm, I don't know. That might be magnetic, so I may put it here, okay? Now, one by one, take items out of your bag and make a hypothesis or an idea of whether you think this will attract to your magnet or not, okay? Kind of come back up. So again, this is where you're gonna take some time. You're gonna go through item one by one and make a prediction or a guess or a hypothesis on whether you think that item will be attracted or magnetic to your magnet. You'll take a few minutes to do this. Again, my plan is to be with you live in the classroom um, and talk about some of the items. I have specifically placed some tricky items in the bag just to see 
how you're thinking about it, okay? So remember, if you think it's magnetic or not magnetic. Now, you might get something in your bag that you're not quite sure about. This is a pink fuzzy pipe cleaner and it bends. It's fuzzy on the outside, but there's something inside that makes it bend. So I'm not really sure. If you're not really sure, that is okay. You do not have to pick a circle. What's cool about this is we are gonna get the tools later to check and see if we were right, okay? So this is when you'll take a few minutes to sort and decide if it's magnetic or not magnetic, okay? After you've gone through and put a whole bunch of different items on to your board, then it's time to test, okay? So you remember that small bag I told you to take out earlier? All right, what you're gonna need to do is pull out this, it looks like a craft stick, but what we've done is glued an end on it for you, a magnet on the end for you. And what this turns into is kind of a magnetic wand. So the first item I thought was magnetic was maybe this pom-pom, because it's, it does not attract. It does not stick. It's not magnetic, but that is okay. I didn't know that. I did get it wrong, but that's okay. So I'm gonna move it to the other pile. I have another piece, this shiny, bright tin foil. Looks like metal, right? It's tin, okay. Is this magnetic? That's not magnetic. That's interesting. I would have thought it would have attracted because it looks like metal. You know, what about this fuzzy pipe cleaner? I said it was soft and fuzzy, but... Oh, it attracts. It sticks to my magnet. And the reason that is, is because there's metal inside that makes it bend and that metal is what is magnetic and attracts to my magnet. So that can stay in that pile, okay? So we've already made a prediction. Now, you're, now you have your magnet wand out to test. Go, and, go ahead and test your items one by one to see if you've gotten them correct. If you don't get it right, that is okay. Don't worry about it and move to the other pile. Okay, I'm gonna give you a few minutes to do that. And then if there's any tricky items um, and we're live on the call, you're gonna go ahead and bring it up to the camera, let your teacher know and we can kind of talk through it, all right? So we've done a great job sorting. Now what I'm gonna need you to do is go ahead and get that other piece of paper, this one. And you're gonna need some more items out of your small bag. You're gonna still need this, your magnet wand. You are gonna need your paper clip. You're gonna need that fuzzy pipe cleaner. And mine's yellow, yours might be a different color. I have some paint here, all right? What color is this, my friends? That's right. What color is this? That's right. What color is this? I think you're right. We have red, blue, and yellow. These colors have a special name. They're called the primary colors. And what that means is these colors can mix together to make other colors. Now, Miss Megan's favorite color is green. But how can I get green in my painting if I don't have green? Is anybody's favorite color purple? What about orange? There's something special about those next three colors. But today we're going to use red, blue, and yellow. These are the primary colors. And we're going to create a piece of art using magnets instead of using our hands or a paintbrush. And I'm gonna show you how. I'm gonna angle my computer screen back down. I'm gonna talk you through it so you can kind of see how we're gonna create our magnetic painting. Um, and the other, the last thing you'll need are your three Q-tips from your small bag. Okay, there's three. One, two, three, okay? So I'm gonna angle this back down for you so you can kind of see what we're doing. And I like to kind of keep it showing you the same way. All right, so we just found out that our magnetic items are the paper clip, right? It is magnetic. And our fuzzy pipe cleaner is also magnetic. And so I'm gonna place those items kind of on the top of my paper over to the edge. Now what I'm gonna do very carefully, you're gonna use your fingers and you're gonna open these little paint pods up. I think most of you have used these before. If not, feel free to ask your teachers, they can help you. Just take your time. We're not in any real big hurry, okay? They are a little tricky, but you can do it, okay? 
So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take your Q-tips and you're gonna dump them in your paint. And I just want you to put lots of dots. You wanna put lots of paint. Do you see I'm putting dots on my paper? Okay, dots on my paper, dots on my paper. So put some yellow, we'll put some blue. Okay, blue. And then for my last one, I'm gonna do some red, okay? Now, it's pretty dot painting, but we're gonna make it even better. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna slide my paint out of the way just for a second. I'm gonna place my magnetic items, my paper clip and my pipe cleaner on top of my paper. See how it's on top of my paper? Then I'm gonna take my magnetic one and I'm gonna put it under my paper. And watch what happens as I move my magnet around. I'm gonna show you the backside. What I'm doing is kind of moving it around, see? And what happens is I move my magnet around, my magnetic items, the magnetic field is strong enough to go through the paper, but my items are moving because the magnet's moving. Now, you can go anywhere around. Try to keep your thing, your magnetic items inside this blue line. That's why I put them there, okay? Put that blue line so you can see it there, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my magnet wand off and I'm gonna set it to the side. I'm also gonna set my items to the side because I wanna show you a couple things. And I'm gonna slide the camera back up. All right. Remember, we started with red, yellow, and blue. Look at all these beautiful colors. There's some green. Miss Megan said her favorite color is green. It looks like maybe when the blue and the yellow mix together, we get green. So what I want you to do is take a few minutes and you can keep using more paint. Um, if you wanna put some more dots up in the corner. Okay. What you wanna do always going to want to keep your magnetic items on the top of the page and your magnet wand underneath and then look, I'm able to move those items. Ooh, I see lots of my favorite color. And what you're going to try to do is stay inside that blue line and that way we make sure we keep all the paint on the paper. Okay, and then you can kind of set it down. And again, you'll see I got to create some really more other beautiful colors. Plus what's cool is you can show your adult this at home um, that tells them. But make sure you tell your parent or adult or mom or dad or grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, whoever you show this painting with how you painted because it's pretty cool that you didn't use your fingers or a paintbrush, but instead you used things that were magnetic. All right. So I hope you had fun today. Um, we're going to get to talk a little bit more about magnets and things that are magnetic and non-magnetic. Um, I can't wait to see how you sort. And I can't wait to see your pictures. Again, um, teachers, you can send them home when they, once they've dried. But uh, here at the museum, we'd love to see some pictures, too, if you're able to capture some and send them to us. So um, thanks for exploring magnets and non-magnetic items and properties of matter and doing a painting in a neat new way. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Can't wait to see you again. Bye-bye.